Back on TYT, uh, as always, we've got another great guest for you guys. Uh, his name is Ben Coase. He's uh, worked with uh, President Ronald Reagan, President George H.W. Bush. He's worked as a speechwriter at the White House, and he worked on the campaign of Mitt Romney. He's now also the author of the book Power Down. Ben, welcome to the Young Turks. Thank you very much. How you doing? Good, good. Uh, now, Power Down is a, f a fictional book. Uh, tell me what the book's about. Power Down is a thriller. Uh, it is about an American energy company that was built by a guy who is a former Navy SEAL, and uh, uh, and the company has makes a major discovery of a large offshore oil field off the coast of South America, and uh, you know this guy has built the company to you know become the biggest company in America without sourcing oil from the Middle East. So some very topical. Uh, issues that you know certainly with the BP disaster we're you know we're confronted with, but uh, it's about an American energy company that is then targeted by a group of terrorists inside the United States of America, and and their uh, their goal um, and their strategy is to try and target economic infrastructure inside the U.S. Uh, and so, you know, I worked at the White House. I was a White House appointed speechwriter to the Secretary of Energy during the first Gulf War. And, you know, I know the energy industry really well. I work for T. Boone Pickens, too. Um, and I think Power Down uh, really deals with some, uh, you know, current issues, but in, in a very authentic way, and I think it's a good story. So um, did, uh, did your work in, inside the White House uh, inform some of what you wrote about? And, and what was that? How so? You know, I think, it, well, without question, absolutely. Um, and here's how I think it really informed it. I think uh, what you realize working in the White House and what you realize when you work alongside guys like Mitt Romney, I ran his campaign for governor, um, you know, you start to learn about, you know, the very simple fact of, of how these people work and think and talk and react. You know, I'll never forget when I was a, um, I was a White House intern during President Reagan's last year in office, and Colin Powell's national security advisor came walking through the West Wing, came walking over to me. He was standing there, and I, I kind of looked down, and on his pants, he, <laughs> sounds kind of funny, but he had a, like a big food stain on his pants. And I just was like shocked. I couldn't believe it. Um, and it was really the first time that I started to realize, well, you know, wow, he's, you know, the president, the vice president, very important people, national security advisor. You know, they're just human beings, like, you know, you and I. And, I, and so I think how it informed the book, uh, sorry for the long answer for that, how it informed the book is, I think it's very authentic. I think the way the characters deal with this attack on the country and on this company is very authentic. Uh, it's not a kind of superhero approach to, you know, how it would happen. And, you know, right. my, editor, my editor at St. Martin's was Robert Lovelace's editor for most of his uh, career. And, and I think the thing I always liked about Robert Lovelace is he doesn't, I think, create superheroes. He puts human beings into books and then, um, you know, creates stories around them and lets the, lets the characters really drive the story. And I think, I really think that's hopefully what we accomplished with, or what I accomplished with Power Down. I bet, you know, so that opens up a good, interesting uh, line of conversation, because, you know, you worked as campaign manager for Mitt Romney, as you said, uh, when he was running for governor, and talk about human frailty. Uh, when you look at what Romney did as governor, and you look at the Mitt Romney today, those two people seem not at all related. Uh, I don't know, when I look at it on the surface, his positions have flip-flopped on, it appears, almost every major issue. Do you see the same thing I do, and are you concerned about that? I don't do the same thing. Um, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Mitt Romney fan, and I know him well, and I like him. Um, I was on uh, the Sean Hannity show last night, and he, he asked kind of a, a, a similar <laughs> question that, that you just did when we were off the camera. Um, you know, I think this is an issue that Mitt has to deal with because there are people out there who are saying, you know, are saying this. What I can say is, I'm more of a, you know, having having 
um, first of all, I, by the way, I'm not trained, so I apologize for the hold up a second. <laughs> I feel like it gives us a, a certain authenticity. Like, I feel like at any moment a terrorist could walk onto the train or something. All right, anyway, yes. I think so. Kind of. Hold on one sec. So, okay, there we go. On the med issue, you know, I'm kind of, I put myself kind of in the Ronald Reagan school, which, you know, Ronald Reagan, as you know, used to say, someone who I agree with 80% of the time is in a 20% uh, enemy. And I think, you know, Mitt, had, yet Mitt has evolved, and a lot of things he hasn't evolved. I mean, he held real firm on taxes in Massachusetts. He did a good job up here. And for the time, you know, he, he made a try on health care, and, you know, um, and I think it is different than the Obama plan. So, you know, I think there are a lot of issues. I'm not his spokesman. I like the guy. I think, uh, look, but, I think he would be a, a dramatic improvement over uh, the, the current occupant. But, of that Ben, ben come, come on, come on. Look, the health care plan is, of course, uh, what a lot of people are concerned about on the right because it looks so right. similar to the Obama's health care plan. But it's not just that. He flip-flopped on stem cells, I think, twice. So now he's oppo he was opposed and in favor, now opposed. On abortion, he said he would protect abortion rights better than any Democrat would. Now he's, of course, against abortion and yeah. he's pro-life. On the environment, he said global warming was one of the biggest issues we had to deal with and it was an absolute emergency. Now, not so much. On gay rights, he was totally in favor of gay rights. Now, not so much. And when, when you go down the list, it seems like a disingenuous guy, doesn't it? I mean, to the naked eye. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, I mean, just the fact that you're, you're bringing it up, that, that, you know, it means that it is out there, something he's got to deal with. Like, you know, um, Reagan, you know, changed on a lot of issues, too. Um, I think Mitt, in 2012, you know, he's got to um, convince people uh, like you um, and other, you know, potential voters that, that uh, you know, I mean, we talk about authenticity in a book. You know, voters want authenticity in their leaders. Um, one of the reasons that people love Ronald Reagan is they felt that, you know, whether he thought it was going to be unpopular or wildly popular, he said what he, he believed and he stuck by it through thick and thin. Um, I think it's one of the things that, that uh, you know, Mitt has got to strive for. I know him personally, and I know... And I ran his campaign for governor, and so I know that he does have a very strong core, you know, set of beliefs. He's evolved on some issues, no question. And there's some things you got to, you know, um, do in Massachusetts if you want to get, you know, if you want to have any chance of getting elected. So, you know, but but your your brain's up and up, which is, you know, he's going to have to deal with that. You know, I can't convince you; he's going to have to convince you. And and uh, what I will say though is that you might not vote from the primary, but I, uh, you know, if he wins. Um, He's a heck of a lot better uh, than than what's currently going on in there. So, uh, Ben, one one more question for you. And we're talking to Ben Coase. Yeah, yeah. He's the author of Power Down. Uh, it's a fictional book about terrorists and and, and the oil industry, et cetera. It's it's, it's interesting. So, uh, Ben, you know, you, you work for Ronald Reagan, and you uh, just mentioned a couple of things about him. I, you know, I've always made the case that, and I voted for Reagan back in the day, right? Or I, okay. actually, I'm sorry, I didn't vote for him, but I supported him because I was too young. Um, but I did vote for George H.W. Bush, another guy you worked for. Um, but I feel that the political spectrum has shifted so much that today a guy like Reagan couldn't get elected in a Republican primary. I mean, he gave amnesty to illegal immigrants. He cut and run from Lebanon. You know, that's one way of phrasing it. He traded arms for hostages with terrorists. And he, get, you know, and, uh, he had 11 major tax increases after his initial tax cuts. He wouldn't stand a chance in today's Republican Party, would he? Oh boy, you know, I've never heard that question. It's a great question. Uh, I think he would. Um, I think that, uh, you know, because Reagan had something that, that went above and beyond, um, you know, individual issues. And, and you know, it, it's hard to, you know, it's kind of hard to, to judge because you, you're throwing things in there that he did after he was he was elected, you know. Um, and if you're going to do that, you got to include the fact that, um, you know, he... he he really took down the Soviet Union, um, and it was really his strategy of arms buildup that did that. He ushered in a new age of economic growth in the country. You know, there are a lot of positive things he did, but 
you know, but it's a great point too. You know, it's you know what what does it you know how do you win your Republican primary um, because the voters are you know as you know people who go out and vote in primaries are tend to be one issue uh, 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 much more um, conservative you know just like on the left much more liberal so you you, you kind of get a, a skewed result based you know versus what happens in the mainstream and I think you know it's a great question that you ask you know could could Ronald Reagan you know get nominated uh, today. Certainly, Barack Obama could not get nominated to the Democratic nomination today if he were to run. There's, there's no question about that. So, it's a great question. It's you know one of the fascinating things about politics is how people kind of grab lightning in a bottle. And 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 you know Jimmy Carter is a great example. I mean you know I mean how did that guy get the nomination in 1976? I mean it's just or or in, uh, uh, right yeah in 1976. I mean it's just it's just crazy. You know so ben, things there... happen. You know, is there any chance that Reagan might have these days lost to a Christine O'Donnell or a Sharon Angle in a primary? <laughs> Definitely not Christine O'Donnell, I don't think. Um, uh, <laughs> or Sharon Angle, no. Uh, I, I don't think so. Um, Just because they're a little too far out, you think? Well, you know, I do happen to think that, um, you know, I happen to think the Tea Party is a very healthy thing for this country and for the Republican Party. You know, all aspects of it. You know, I don't know everybody in the Tea Party, you know, all the leaders, you know, and I'm sure that there is some hair here, some, some hair here. But the bottom line is, it's, it's energy that's coming from the grassroots, for the most part. Of, and it, you know, and it's, it's people kind of standing up and saying, you know, you're, you're, you're forgetting about us. We want less government. We want less tax. So I actually think it's kind of a healthy thing. And, and, um, but, um, okay. you know, I don't know what, how about you? What do you think of the of the Tea Party? Uh, you know, I think that they started out great. They were against the bailouts, uh, and that's what got them angry in the first place. And then I think they got totally misdirected. I think they they got you know uh, directed into uh, supporting large health insurance companies and tax cuts for the top two percent, and picking people like Christine O'Donnell and Sharon Angle that are. You know, if you care about the Republican Party, or you know, have a much lower yeah. chance of winning in those states, and uh, and you know, it, so obviously it's going to some that energy is going to help the Republican Party in some ways, and it's going to really hurt their electoral chances in other ways. Yeah. So, yeah, you no, know, I think you're right. I think I'm not sure that the Tea Party will be around in ten years, but I, you know, I think that the reason it, it does exist is because the, the you know the issues that are I think the, the the better issues that they're focused on less government, less taxes. Those issues should be Republican issues, and to the extent that it's, that the Tea Party's evolved, I think it's a sign of the fact that the Republican Party needs to do more. I think you know, frankly, George Bush spent too much, um, and so you know, and, and the Congress allowed it and par- partnered with him in that. And I think you know, the GOP has got to listen to that. That voice is coming from those guys, and hopefully co-opt it and, and remind itself that it should be the party of less government, less taxes, and uh, you know, uh, uh, in, in, a, in a free market economy. So, all right, Ben Coase, a very good conversation. Really enjoyed talking to you. The book is Power yeah. Down, everybody, and uh, thank you so much for joining us, Ben. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, you can check it out on Amazon, and you can also go to uh, Ben Coase. Yes. dot com, and uh, you can read an excerpt. And in fact, and I know you you might not want to listen to it, but I encourage you to, um, for the audio book. The, the audio book's great, and it's the, the, one of the guys from Law and Order uh, records. You know, it's the narrator, but um, there's a twenty minute bonus conversation uh, between Mitt and I, and we talk about the book. He read the book, he liked it, um, and or actually, he loved it. So it's uh, you know. Okay. Um, and, and you can listen to part of that by going on, on, on the website. But right. thanks for having me on, and thank, uh, thanks to your, viewers, to your listeners for, uh, for, for listening to me. Great talking to you. All right. Thank you, Ben. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. Take care. We'll be right back.